Lee, you've been with us a little while now and we've never properly introduced you to our supporters, so this is an opportunity to do that. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your, your time with us so far, your role and, uh, and, and what, you're, what you're doing? Yeah, it's been, you know, it's been a good 17, 18 months now since I joined uh, Brentford. Uh, I think it was April, May 2019, which has seen a lot happen in that, in that period. Uh, my main role is, is, to, is to head the recruitment up for, for the football club. Uh, but very recently as well, off the back of obviously a successful period, uh, we've decided to uh, amalgamate the two football clubs, FC Michelin and Brentford Football Club, and the recruitment processes that we've built through Brentford um, in that time and obviously before my time, um, makes sense to combine that uh, for both clubs and, to, and it's my job to, to sort of direct that um, for both clubs. So what, what's what's happened is that um, just for just for clarity, just to make sure we know, Matthew obviously owns a controlling interest in both clubs, and there's been a look across the sort of the the, the, the two and thought that combining that would be be more efficient. Or are you looking for the are you looking for different sort of players for both teams? Well, there's different rules uh, for both clubs, and and that restricts where you can obviously recruit players from. Um, but whenever you're out at a game or whenever you're, you're looking at a region to, to identify the best available players, you can always do that for, for two clubs. So it makes sense to combine the recruitment processes and every player we look at, we, we have two avenues for them. Is it into, into Denmark, where they play obviously Champions League football recently, which is a great level, or is it into England um, Championship, hopefully Premier League in the future. So. It gives us a good angle, actually, to, to speak to representatives of players and to consider players in two different lights, but along the same lines, because we share similar philosophies, of course. How's your first 18 months been? Chaotic. Um, it's, been, it's been challenging to, obviously, uh, cast your net a little bit wider than it, than it obviously was before I joined the club, uh, to get a, a knowledge base of firstly the European market and then to take that onto a, onto a wild, worldwide perspective was, was challenging in, in the early stages. Um, and I think when I came in, we had, we had bids in for all four of our front players back in 2019. And we only end up, ended up obviously losing one of them players, which was pleasing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been, it was a challenging first couple of months to, to get my head around things and to, to gain that knowledge base. But now in a very strong position and and good that the football club have obviously uh, entrusted me with such a role to, to oversee two clubs. But sandwich right, you know, smack in, in the middle of all of that has been two great opportunities for, for, for the club to, to sort of have a stab at promotion into the Premier League, firstly through the league structure and then through a playoff uh, situation, which was fantastic and exciting. Um, and then obviously the pandemic, which has affected things all around for, for football clubs around the world, which, you know, Brentford have to consider. So if you're overseeing recruitment for two football clubs, presumably there's a lot of people working with you. I don't expect you to go into minute detail, but give us a little bit about, about the structure of the department, how many people are working with you, what, what are they doing? Yeah, I mean, we have some fantastic people in the recruitment department, we really do. Um, we have some, some great knowledge as well. We have, we have people that have been managers working in the recruitment department. We have uh, people that can, can deal with data uh, at first hand in, in a good way. We have a range of talents, you know, Chris Bradley, uh, head of technical scouting, scout coordinator is a very, very talented young man that, that we're lucky to have. He, he, he plays a key part in, in helping to identify players from around Europe, now for both clubs. Um, Gary Simpson, who, who has worked with me previously, great knowledge around uh, football in the UK. Um, Brendan McFarlane, that's done very well for us in France. You know, young Alistair Jenkins, that. He's focusing around the, the non-league structure and, and has seen the likes of Finn Stevens come into the B team. You know, we have a, a great knowledge base uh, around the department and to spread that now across uh, the world, if you like, for two football clubs and to work with people like Christine Cajere at, uh, at FCM and, and the people at FCM is, is really, really exciting. You've alluded to it there, but you've got a situation where you're overseeing a recruitment department that's recruiting for FC Michelin, who a couple of days ago, or in the last couple of weeks, have played Liverpool and Ajax in the, in the Champions League. You've got Brentford, who are a, pretty much established, if we're not going too far, as a top six, top eight championship team looking to make that next step. You've got Brentford B, who don't even have a league, 
um, don't a, a games program that's a, a bit hit and miss. You're looking for younger players. FC Michelin presumably also have younger younger squads that I'm probably not quite as aware of. How do you go about finding, like looking for players to fit in all those areas? Well, it's, if you have your structures and your processes uh, correct, the, then that is very easy because you have a streamline of identification that comes into an assessment process that then goes on to the next level where you maybe involve the coaches and then all the way up to the director of football to make the final decision. You know, so it's important that across both clubs, like we have with Brentford, we have a we have a real structure and a process in place. That was a a challenge when I first walked in. We we needed to really put that structure in place off the back of some really good work that was done previous to me through different people. Most so Robert Rowan, the late Robert Rowan, obviously did a lot of work around the B team structure and recruiting top players into into that sort of level. And FCM have, have a similar sort of uh, squad underpinning the the first team as well in the way of a travel team. So we have four outputs of players, um, but it's easy in the respect of people know, agents know, players know, and even other football clubs know now that if there's anywhere to send their players, it's into an environment where they can really develop and go again, if you like, and, and fulfil their potential. And I think both football clubs encompass that that philosophy and, and really deliver in terms of developing players, whether it be uh, a B team, travel team uh, setting, or whether it be first team players. I think you know we've proved time and time again over the last four or five years that the philosophy of Matthew Benham, which is to find undervalued talent and to develop them and, and sell them for profit, is what we've been doing successfully. I'm particularly interested in the B team because to a certain extent in the championship, you know what you're looking for. You've got probably got a rough idea of the level that it will take to get um, into, into the top six in the championship. It, it might vary year on year, but you know roughly. Whereas in the B team, you're looking for someone who who then has to develop themselves. You're not looking for a ready-made championship player at that level. You're looking for someone who in two or three years' time might become one. That, that seems like a very difficult thing to do. It is, and there's no direct science to, to say that you can definitely say that a particular player will become a, a certain level of player. You know, you've got, to, you've got to do a lot of work. You've got to mitigate the risk to a certain extent. And you've got to look at your own de department. You look at your own football club and the environment that... that that could lend itself to a development within a player. When, you, when you're assessing these players, that's my job. And you get a gut, a gut feeling, you know, aside from all the data and the processes and the structures, you get a gut feeling on, on, on specific players and, and that's, the, that's the key point where you, where you choose to do the work and take it on to the next levels and, and to eventually sign that player. But whether it's a first team player, whether it's a B team player, any football club, you're looking at potential, that's what the club does, and that's my job. Is the potential there to develop this player into a better player? Can they help the squad that we're recruiting that player into? And they're the, they're the key questions that you're asking yourself. And from a B team perspective, they train so close together out there on the training ground, and they're so close to it when they come in, that actually, we have players playing at a higher level than, than Brentford at the moment in U23 departments and U18 departments that desperate to come to Brentford because the pathway is so is so real. Uh, what I wanted to do is just look at um, two players. We, we sit here on the Friday, the day before Blackburn, I'm not sure when this will be released, but that's when we're sitting down. Through three days ago, we had two summer signings in Ivan Tony and Vitaly Janel, who were part of the starting 11 for, for the game. So only, only, only two from the summer. I wanted to use those to try and get some examples of the process because you've got Ivan Tony who you would have to have your eyes closed in football not to know who Ivan Tony was. I'm sure everyone in the country knew who he was. They'd seen his goal scoring record. They knew where, where he'd come from. And it was just where he was going to go. We've got Vitaly Anel, and I'm probably um, playing, uh, underplaying the, um, the, the knowledge in football, but I don't expect many average football fans knew who he was. You wouldn't necessarily have, have known him. So you've got those two players, both of whom are, have come in and are making an impact at championship level. So talk us through sort of the differences between getting one who everyone knows about and one who you're almost Plucking from plucking from the unknown. Yeah, and I think the the latter in Vitali Anil is exactly what the football club's all about, and it's using all of the available resources, and that's the identification processes that we have at the football club, which is to identify players from from around the world. Um, Bundesliga two, we think, is a really good market for us, and, and we intend to con continuously look into that specific division. And Vitali was, was somebody that we've had our eyes on ever since I came into the building. He's a, 
He's a player that's played at a good level in terms of youth international for, for Germany. Um, he's always uh, performed well when he's gone into the first team setting at uh, Bochum. And we really liked what we saw and we just bided our, our time with that one a little bit, Chris. We, we, we identified him a, a, a while back and we've just sort of seen the development over time in him and the maturity. Um, obviously looked into the background, off the field situations, personality. And he just fit what that position is all about for Brentford Football Club in, in our overall opinion. Um, and we do that very well at the club. We, we specifically look at each position differently. It's different, yeah? There's a different role attached to each and every position, but there's an overall philosophy and he fit uh, the two criterias. So in terms of Itali, it did surprise a lot of people. I even think it surprised people at Bochum, yeah, to be brutally honest, but that's what we're about. You know, we, we get good eyes on the player, so we had a lot of knowledge in the department uh, looking at him in different, from different angles, assessing his game, does he fit what we want, um, and he fit the criteria, he fit the squad model, and that's why we chose to go for it at that time, and it was, you know, it was a good decision in the end, with three days, three days later, obviously, Christian getting an injury, and then that's been good for Vitali because then he's had his opportunity to uh, showcase his abilities, and he's, up to this point, he's done a very good job. And Ivan, very different. Ivan I've got a lot of knowledge on because a lot of my work has been around the lower lower leagues one and two in, in England and I cast my mind back when Ivan moved from Northampton Town to Newcastle United. I remember the games where he came on, uh, sort of made his debut and, and helped Northampton stay in the league um, and it started there, the, the fascination with Ivan a little bit. I think he's matured over the years, I think he's, he's had that move and then had to sort of re-establish himself. Uh, but you just seen the man grow in confidence and maturity over the years. And we've probably had opportunities to look at Ivan sooner than what we did. And we actually did in January. And we, we, we attempted to try and maybe uh, recruit Ivan in January before we eventually got him in the summer. But again, that's what the football club's about as well. We don't just go for players based on that one uh, transfer window because that's the wrong way to do things. If you believe in a player and you want to recruit a player, then you've got to obviously do your due diligence, but work on that situation. And although it was disappointing in January not to get Ivan, we made it a priority to get him in the summer. Obviously understanding that if we wasn't a Premier League club, that we'd potentially lose uh, Ollie Watkins. You mentioned in your answer about Vitali about um, recruiting different um, players for different positions. So does that mean that your department is working on a set formation or are you looking at different or is it sort of okay so that player will play in a defensive midfield play, role or a midfield role whether we're playing 4-3-3, 3-5-2 whatever it's going to be it's that type of player rather than, than, than a specific system. Well Brentford fans will know that we've changed formation um, on a couple of key occasions in in the last two years. I think when Thomas first came in he changed from a 4-3-3 a three, three to a 3-4-3 three, three before my time and then sort of started last season in a 3-4-3 three, three, and then changed to a 4-3-3. Three, three. So I think Thomas is adaptable in his, in his thinking, so we can't be caught out as a recruitment department. So for that reason, the structures that we have in place is we recruit across all of the, I call it the 16 positions on the pitch, because there is, in my view, 16 different positions on the pitch, so that when we get to a transfer window, we already have the names for every position, and therefore the requirements, as set by the Directors of Football and Thomas, we can then move quickly and efficiently uh, with that chosen position. And we've worked with Thomas and we've worked with, the, uh, with Rasmus and, and Phil in terms of what we're looking for specifically, very simply, in each uh, individual position. That gives us a real head start in the identification process because then we're not focusing on the wrong individuals. So, it's something that we put in place when I came in uh, into the club in 2019 and it's something we'll continue to put in place for both clubs going forward. Uh, and finally, I guess is a, a two-part question really. So uh, you alluded to it with Ivan in terms of you went in January but then you prioritised for the summer. So how far ahead are you working? Are you already working two or three transfer windows ahead? And then second part of that, I guess we sit here in early December. What are you doing now? Well. I, I always get 
I always get that question of, oh, you, you know, you're having, a, you're having a bit of downtime <laughs> until the window starts again. From February uh, during pandemic, it has been a really busy time for the recruitment department. I must applaud everybody within my department because they have worked the socks off to, to identify opportunities uh, in our chosen markets for players that may be available. It was a real challenging time specifically this year because we didn't know if it was going to be a Premier League club or a Championship club. Um, so it was identifying slightly different players, although albeit you know, the Championship players we look for as well, we hope will go on to be Premier League players. But it's our busiest time when there's no windows in place. You know, By the time the window comes around, we're ready. We've already had the discussion. We've already identified the players. And I go back to my lower league um, job roles where you know, it was a momentary situation where you'd have an injury and then you'd have to recruit a player. I always tried to work a little bit more in advance anyway because if you can be proactive as a recruitment department, then you're going to get the best value. You're going to be in there earlier than the next club and you're going to be able to take that player ahead of other uh, com competitive football clubs because you've put that work in at an early stage. So it's a really busy time for us at the moment, especially obviously only recently amalgamating the two uh, football clubs and underneath one umbrella in terms of recruitment. There's a lot of work that goes on uh, behind the scenes, but it's something that I enjoy and it's it's something that we're extremely positive with and confident will be a real game changer going forward. So do you already know players in mind for to, to sign in the summer, depending on where in the pyramid we are? Yeah, we as a football club know beyond the summer. You know, I think that's that's the beauty of how we work. We, we understand who we, who we may lose if, we're, if, we're, if we haven't gained promotion to the Premier League. And we'll, we're just looking at them players that could maybe make an impact in January at the moment. Um, but we're not going to go and panic and, and rush into signings that we don't fully believe in. But yeah, to answer your question, we're, we're well ahead in terms of what we think we'll be recruiting in, in the future. But it changes. Of course it changes. And you have to be adaptable. I talk a lot about proactive recruitment but you have to be resourceful and you have to be reactive as well in certain situations. So who signed in January then? <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> I'll lose my job. I'll, I'll lose my job. But I've, uh, I've got a few interesting uh, opportunities uh, for us to explore should we, should we want to do that.